so before we carry on with the objects I just wanted to touch on a quick subject here um, it's not really overly complicated and we kind of already covered parts of it I guess um, basically so like uh, for my um, extensions and stuff that I use um, I use that central code base um, and then doing it this way makes it to where I can also set it up to use that central code base for you know general imports and stuff like that or requires um, and so like all I've got in here in the um, cheat engine auto run directory is this one file um, and that way I can real easy keep track of it um, and all this really does uh, it does add that bypass so that way it's there off the bat but at any rate um, all this really does is just set up my path so that way it will look where I want it to look you know it's really no more complex than that um, all I do is just add to the package.path here so that way it will look in the directories I want it to look in um, in this case it's more or less literally just this directory so that way I can um, just import this kind of stuff directly you can see there that's all I'm doing is I'm telling it to at the end require that which then tells it to come here and then this actually you know does a little bit of modifications for a cheat engine um, that I like and then just requires all my plugins um, the only disadvantage here is it's not as simple as just slapping something in that folder but I kinda like doing it this way so that way I have more control over the load order and then you know I can easily comment something out and take it out for a little bit in case you know especially if I'm debugging and I'm having problems because um, sometimes you will have that with you know plugins a, a you know update a cheat engine it gets updated um, and it either changes something uh, that actually you know you'll have to fix your code to make it work right or you know it's something that you were doing that was goofy and I've run into that myself many times where it just happened to work before <laughs> you know and it's not even necessarily a real serious change in cheat engine it's just for whatever reason it doesn't work that way anymore and it was never really meant to it just you you know when I was poking around I thought okay this is how it works and then I, I find out later that that's not actually how it was ever meant to work in the first place um, and it just somehow you know by accident did and then when you know a new version comes out something slightly changes in the code um, not even related to this but maybe even just the way the compiler compiles it just ever so slightly differently and now it doesn't work you know it works the way it's supposed to instead of having this one little fringe case that let it do something it shouldn't have um, so I just kind of wanted to touch on that a little bit um, anyway so, you know, to add to our path here, you can see it's really not that complicated. I am using a um, environment variable. If you don't know what that is, just, you know, like Google Windows environment variables, um, and you know, in your current version of Windows. And it'll kind of go over what that is um, and, you know, how to set one and that kind of thing. If you do want to go that route, there's really no reason for it. Um, otherwise you can just kind of hard code it like this and so the main thing to do is just remember that um, you know when you build your path you just need to have that they need to be these um, semicolon separated values and then whatever the file you know you just need a question mark to kind of mark the file name um, and I would suggest and so you know whatever folder you use for this you know you can set it up much this same way and then just make sure you add the, you know, to be able to look for it as a single file or as a directory. And then um, the way this works is so this way, even though this is, you know, like my Lua projects folder, um, just know that literally just maps to this. You know, that's that's all this does. It just maps to this folder right here. Um, so that way, when I go to import, say, my module, um, I would do it in this kind of format. And so that way, you know, it will know to look in this folder, then this folder, you know, or that for that file, or in the case of my um, teleporter, you know, it'll look for that folder and look in that folder and, you know, look for the um, init file. 
Um, so not real complicated, but you know, like this kind of thing right here, it can make life a lot simpler when you go to start messing with cheating, especially if you want to have that central code base. So you don't have to constantly move it around, you know, to put it in that Lua folder in the cheat engine folder or that kind of thing. And then like I'm doing here is I've got my projects folder and then I've got like a shared Lua folder that I like to use. Um, and you can see here, I'm just putting it in that, you know, my cheat tables folder and just calling it Lua, you know. Um, and you can kind of put it wherever you want, whatever, you know, if you got it on a different disk, then, you know, cheat engine, you know, it doesn't really matter. Just however you want to do it. Um, the main thing I would point out with this is just, because I don't think we've actually covered this, is so strings in Lua, um, if we were to just do this as a standard string, you'd have to escape all these characters. Um, that the syntax highlighter because it's not recognizing these as special but um lua will so you'd have to actually escape those by um making it a double slash to tell it you want one slash there or one backslash um and it's basically because of these kind of special characters you know new line tab uh, return you know carriage return and that kind of thing um but if you do that double bracket and there the um, neat thing is so this way you can kind of mix and match stuff um, you can do that kind of thing um, of course for simple strings I just use the, the double bracket real quick but then this way it tells that we you know this is a you know literal string I think is a term uh, Lua uses for this um, and then that way you know you, you know if you've ever done any um, auto you know using the uh, Lua auto assembler and you know loaded scripts of that you might have seen people doing that kind of thing and this way it'll it would keep these new lines and you know it would you know this whole thing would be the string as is you know all the way over to here um, and it won't take anything out whereas you know um, normally it'll kind of parse the string a little bit um, so that's just something to keep in mind that, you know, uh, you'd either need to escape it as a regular string or you can do it in this way and that way you can just have it cleaner with just single slashes and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but again, this would be kind of the main part I'd say just have a look at. Um, I don't know if we covered this yet. If you're, you know, this is just looking in a special place to get to tell what character uh, this OS uses for a file, you know, a directory separator is all that does. And there, there's other stuff in there, but the first character is just a backslash on Windows, and that's all I'm doing here. Um, you don't really need to do that. I, I, you know, I honestly couldn't tell you why I do that, but I do it that way, <laughs> you know, because you can see here I've got it hard-coded, so it's kind of, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense to do it that way to some extent, I would honestly admit. But, um, but if you want to go ahead and set that up and do it in a similar way and maybe even concatenate this string to use that, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then interesting enough, there is actually a table dot um, concatenate or dot concat, I guess, um, where you could pass it if we created a table of um, say local t equals this and then we could actually just go ahead and tell it you know um, L would be the first thing here the L drive uh, and then documents and then on down the line here and then basically just kind of get this string ready you can concatenate and then you can just call this table dot concatenate um, and give it whatever separator you want and then it will build that string um, actually now that I've got it set up I'm gonna go ahead and do that <laughs> but um, you know that can kind of give you an idea of you know there are a lot of different ways to do that and then that way again you know this would kind of technically be you know something that could you know work on a different operating system um, with the way cheat engine is it's really just not something you need to do um, but I just I did have it I, I kind of do that for some stupid reason um, I guess just because in my mind uh, Lua is you know cro cross cross platform I kind of want to set it up to be ready for that as I can even though I, you know there's you know, I just 
I don't like Mac, so I'm not running on that. Um, you know, maybe somebody on, on a Mac would want to try and use my modules, and then uh, I do like Linux, so, but there you're usually going to run Cheat Engine in like a virtual machine or something, so it's up to you exactly how you want to set that up. Again, that can just be a hard-coded thing, um, or you can do it this kind of way. Um, but this will allow, you know, you to work from that, you know, from whatever central directory you want to work from, and then you can even, you know, import your modules and, you know, just do a lot of, a lot of things with it without having to worry about moving files and where they're at. And so like that way, as we continue on, um, and I've actually already shot the next video, so I'll kind of talk about doing it two different ways um, and how I'm going to shoot this video next, you know, anyway. Um, anyway, so that way when we start working with, you know, our, our objects here, you can create, um, you know, a, 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 your uh, module in a similar kind of way and then just kind of leave it in one place, but then, you know, you won't have to open Cheat Engine, make a table save it then open that table and make sure everything is in that same directory to require you'll be able to you know you'll have to use the correct format um basically whatever you know so like i said uh, this is the actual folder i tell it to look in and then that way when i start requiring you know like i2 um, cet lua um, it will then require this and thus you know because of the way it works underlying in lua then it'll look at this folder and load this up or this file and load it up and then as I require more stuff I have to keep requiring it in that same format because it'll start at that that other directory back here and then it will look for whatever I tell it to look in from that point on you know um, so that's just one you know you can do it either way um, if you want to just keep those you know you're not going to go as far with the module and you just want a couple of short little files and you're just kind of going along with this to learn there's nothing wrong with that either um, but if you are thinking you know you might end up actually using some of this stuff a little more and this is going to be your kind of base you're going to build off of as you learn um, I would suggest going ahead and setting up an actual module and kind of doing this kind of thing um, so that way it just it'll make life easier for you because like with this now I can still just I can open sheet engine yeah okay I screwed something up in that file I may not have done that right um, hmm. oh right there gotta have things separated with commas otherwise it don't work right uh, okay Let's open that again. No errors. Um, so all you know, all my tools here are loaded. Everything's loaded up right, and then that way, I can go ahead and just you know require from here. Cheat engine table Lua, and it'll input. You know, it'll require things, and you know it won't throw any errors you know and so from here I can start playing with object you know or, or doing whatever I need to do you know to test something out or you know whatever the case may be I'm just kind of showing you here that you know we can do this and not throw an error is all I'm really wanting to show you here I don't want to get too crazy with it um, anyway so, um, and in the next video, we will actually, we're, you know, like I said, I already shot that one, and we're going to build that object class, and then we're going to build that, um, the, uh, symbol class, and then actually play with them a little bit, and kind of show you how the underlying meta tables work, and, and all that kind of fun stuff, so, um, but I did just want to go over setting up this central code base. Um, I think that is a, a handy thing to do, you know, to, to have that. And then, like, even what I do is I just go ahead and right in here I keep that same file. So that way I can keep track of it. Um, so when I get a new version of Cheat Engine, I can literally just, you know, copy that one file and paste it in. And then, you know, everything will kind of be the same. And then I don't have to worry about, you know, when I go to disable things, because I know in the past that was something I'd run into where... I'd go look in the Cheat Engine Auto Run folder here, and there would just be way more stuff 
um, which is mine, and I'd have to try and remember, okay, what did I add? What is somebody else's? Um, you know, because like this is, um, I cannot think of the guy's name, player or something. Um, I swear that's what it is. I know his picture, but um, anyway, you know, this is one of his. Um, it's not mine. Um, I've got some other ones I don't technically use anymore. I think that one might actually be a part of Cheat Engine anymore. I think it got added. But anyway, um, so that way I don't get confused on what was, you know, the default auto run stuff and what is stuff I've added. So, you know, that way I can, you know, if I need to, I can quickly just delete this file and it won't load my modules anymore or my plugins. Um, and that's helpful for me for doing these tutorials sometimes. But then also, like I said, you just, you know, if you get an error and it, crashes something and you're trying to figure it out you can kind of go you know go about dealing with it in a little more simplistic way and then also you can you know as I said you can comment out where you're importing that stuff and just you know you've got more options and it just you know to me it, it seemed like it was a little bit easier to deal with in the long run I mean you just got to set it up um, is all you're doing to you know once it's set up it's kind of done um, so anyway, that was all I really wanted to touch on was just kind of setting up your um, your module, um, and I'd go over that a little bit more in what will be the next video um, to just kind of explain you know how you want to actually set up set up your module if you're going to go that route um, and all that fun stuff. But um, anyway, we'll go on to the next.